Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, June 4th, and it is a cool, overcast June morning here in southeast of Pennsylvania. Or at least it will be. It's really June 3rd. I'm recording this on Saturday evening because I got a lot to do Sunday morning, and I figured, <laughs> let me get this out of the way tonight. So, sorry to destroy the magic, but that's where we're at. Ah, a lot to do because I'm preparing for the impending uh, second leg of the vacation. Had a wonderful time last week in Pittsburgh uh, visiting the in-laws and I'll talk more about the highlight of that trip. But uh, this week we're headed to the beach, to Virginia Beach and uh, going to do some fishing so pretty excited about that. I am smoking uh, my J. Mouton um, very nicely rusticated billiard with a nice whale spine accent there. Uh, and I am smoking Haunted Bookshop this evening. Because I am who I am, as Popeye once said. Uh, so, yes, we had a great time in Pittsburgh. Uh, we drove out there on Sunday, the Sunday before Memorial Day. And uh, came back on Thursday. And on Wednesday evening, we went to see Bruce Hornsby in, in, in concert. And I'll tell you, I was blown away by that concert. And I'll, I'll talk some more about that uh, towards the end. But I wanted to talk today a little bit about the, the concert venue, actually, because it, it, it's fascinating. And uh, we went to see him in a library, uh, the Carnegie Library of Homestead. And I'll put a link in the description to... Uh, to, to the Carnegie Library of Homestead's website because it's it's really an amazing uh, facility. Now this is very close to uh, my wife's home. In fact, we were married in a church that's just across the street from it. Uh, it's actually across the park, but there's just street, park, street, church. Unfortunately, the church is not there anymore. Uh, it was a beautiful church, but It's, uh, it's gone. But the library still stands. And uh, the library was uh, built by Andrew Carnegie. Now, if you don't know, Andrew Carnegie was a very rich man. He may have been the richest man ever in the world, uh, or at least in the United States, probably in the world. Uh, and that's, of course, if you correct his wealth for inflation and everything. Uh, he accumulated an enormous amount of wealth, uh, primarily in the steel industry. He was very heavily involved in steel, founded U.S. Steel, and therefore had very deep roots in the Pittsburgh area. He was born in Scotland, um, but lived uh, most of his life in the United States, and again, had very deep roots in Pittsburgh because of all the steel factories there. Carnegie um, had a motto, uh, or a dictum, as it was called. Uh, he believed you should live your life in three phases. The, the first third of your life should be spent learning everything that you can possibly learn. Just immerse yourself in education. The second third of your life, you should spend earning as much money as you possibly can. Um, I know that sounds a bit harsh and certainly pro-capitalism, but that was what he believed. And then the last third of your life, you should spend giving that money away. So, interesting perspective. And he did. He was a remarkable philanthropist. And one of the things that he strongly believed in was that, that libraries were important. And one of the things I learned doing a little bit of research for this video that I didn't realize before was that prior to Carnegie, libraries were very um, restricted. So you would go into a library and you would say, I'd like this book. And they would go and they would get that book and they would bring it to you and you were allowed to read the book. You couldn't like browse the stacks and, and see what was it, it just wasn't possible it was it was a it was a storefront essentially where you had to ask for uh, someone to bring something to you so this concept of open stacks was actually one of Carnegie's innovations he built uh, I've got some notes here because I'm gonna have to put my glasses on to read them he built um, so the, the library that I saw Bruce Hornsby in is the Homestead Carnegie Library, which was built in 1898. 
uh, and it is the original structure, and I'm going to show you some pictures of the original theater as well, uh, which is, is really impressive. It was the sixth library that he built out of uh, 1,684 libraries in the United States, and he built a total of 2,509 libraries all over the world. Uh, the first one that he built was in 1883 in his hometown of Dunfermline, Scotland. <laughs> Probably pronounced that wrong. So that was built in 1883. That was the first one. And the sixth one in Pittsburgh was in 89, just six years later. So he built a lot of these. And they were not just places to go get books and to read books. They were sort of community centers in a sense. And... This library was the library that my wife went to when she was growing up. She, she told me she used to uh, go there and, and, and basically hide in the library and read uh, Nancy Drew mysteries. And I think that's really wonderful. I didn't know this until just recently about her. Because I, as a kid, spent a lot of time in, in, in the library, my local library in Philadelphia, which was the Pashyunk branch of the Free Library of Philadelphia. Another old uh, structure that I hope is still there. I haven't been there in years, but and my formative years were spent often hiding out in the library reading, not Nancy Drew, but I was a geek. I read a lot of math and science stuff, even as a little kid. Uh, I actually got my adult uh, library card at I believe I was 11 years old because the librarian was annoyed with me because I would always have to ask for the adult books and she'd have to go get them. So finally she said, why don't we just give you an adult card? Uh, so anyway, that's... So we both have this childhood library uh, memory, very fond memories of being in there, uh, hiding out with books and, and, and enjoying ourselves. So, but she would talk about this sometimes and she would say things like, yeah, um, that was a day that me and my sisters, it was a really hot day, so we went swimming at the library. And it always struck me as odd to hear that. And then her dad would say, oh, I was thinking about joining a gym, but I can just go to the library. Uh, this library is really a fascinating building. So let me show you some pictures and uh, tell you a bit more about it. So this is the exterior. This is actually not a picture I took. It's one that I got off of Wikipedia. And you can see the outside of it. You can see it's a very, very large structure, very, very beautiful architecture. And he built these to fit in with the local uh, styles. So uh, this was very consistent with the, the architecture of that time in Pittsburgh, in that area of Pittsburgh. So I took this photo of the uh, little, uh, what would you call this? It's not the cornerstone, but it's a little monument that tells you when the library was was built and uh, that's just outside as you're walking up the path to uh, to go in the front door and then I've got some pictures that I took inside they've got a couple of displays and I'm sorry about the poor photography here but these were all behind glass but they had a pool hall in the library uh, and it was very popular uh, you can see that uh, below the picture there's a, a bit of acoustic showing there and up the side there's some of the scoring beads that were used um, Really interesting display there. Uh, they also had a swimming pool in in the in this library, and apparently, uh, in the 1920s, I think it was, there was a women's Olympic medalist that trained at the Carnegie Library of Homestead. Uh, here you see a shot of the gym where uh, there are men wrestling, and uh, they had they had all sorts of exercise equipment. They still do. Uh, it's still a they still have the gym and the swimming pool. And uh, you can't see it in this picture, but around the top of this gym, there's actually a wooden trail uh, that goes around the entire circumference that you could walk on. It's a suspended wooden uh, trail uh, if you wanted to exercise by walking. And here's some shots of the theater. And uh, you can see it's, it's a, the style is really quite beautiful. Those seats are all original seats. Uh, they're not incredibly comfortable, but they're not too bad. Uh, it wasn't too bad to sit there for a couple of hours. Uh, here you get a better view of the size of the theater. Really quite an intimate setting. Uh, only uh, holds, I, I believe it was like a thousand and maybe forty some uh, people. Um, more shots of that. You can see that chandelier and I've got another shot of that. There, there you can see 
looking back from where we were sitting and those seats again not terribly comfortable but uh, they, they did the job and lots of leg room which is a blessing some of these old theaters have very cramped leg room uh, there's that chandelier and you can see the style of the ceilings uh, this room was acoustically very, very good. Unfortunately, with amplified music, those acoustics break down a bit, so uh, they could have done a better job balancing the audio, but that was not the fault of the theater. That was the fault of the sound crew. Um, and just to give you an idea of the stage. And here we see some pictures from the concert. So this is a, a wide shot that kind of shows you what my view was. And, you know, really not a bad uh deal and I think we paid forty dollars for these tickets <laughs> so pretty close up and personal um, very intimate setting uh, we got some closer shots there you can see uh, Bruce Hornsby at the piano and, and his band behind him those dulcimers came into play later he did a couple of songs on those along with uh, mandolin and washboard and that was that was really quite entertaining it was a great show uh, and that brings us back to the start. Now can I get back to the camera with it without difficulty? Hey, look at that. <laughs> Sorry about the technical difficulties. This new version of OBS has really given me fits with the hotkeys, but we'll get it sorted eventually. So uh, in terms of the concert, I thought you'd be interested in just seeing the that library and learning a bit about that. But the concert itself was phenomenal. Uh, I went in with pretty low expectations. You know, I knew who Hornsby was. I, I said before, I mostly knew him, you know, other than his big 80s hits that everybody knows, I knew him as somebody that toured with the Grateful Dead. And um, my wife was much more interested in seeing him because she really likes some of his uh, 80s stuff. I'm saying 80s. I wonder if it was actually 90s. No, it must have been 80s. Um, she was really looking forward to hearing him play Mandolin Rain, which unfortunately he didn't, so she was a bit annoyed by that. He did play That's Just the Way It Is, um, which was his other big mega hit. And then I'd say about 30% of what he played I recognized. Either I recognized it as a Bruce Hornsby piece. Uh, he played a couple of pieces by others. Um, uh, for example, um, I think it's Don Henley, uh, End of the Innocence, which he co-wrote with Don Henley. Uh, he played a version of that. Uh, so about 30% of what he played, I recognized. The other stuff was new to me. But even the stuff that, that I recognized, even like the really, even um, that's just the way it is, which, you know, that's like a signature piece for him. That was his first number one hit, I believe. He completely took that song apart and and reimagined it replayed it this band um he mentioned that the, at least the guitar player was relatively new like only a couple of nights had he been playing with them it felt almost like they were rehearsing at times uh, it was very free association free form jazz like music uh he would just go off into a solo that just broke away from the, the, the song, at times almost sounding bad. Uh, at one point, my wife turned to me and said, this sounds like a lot of noise, because everybody was playing something different, and it was very cacophonous. But it, it was sort of a jazz-like moment where everything just kind of breaks down, and you're thinking, how in the world is this going to come back together? And then it just all falls back together into that melody again. It's beautiful. And it was it was masterful. I really enjoyed this. And you know, I'm, I'm enjoying it as a jazz fan, not as a Bruce Hornsby fan. They were having so much fun. You could tell that they were like, they would like point and smile like, hey, that was pretty good. Um, at times they, uh, he laughed a couple of times at something he did. They surprised themselves with, with some of what they were doing. Uh, I believe it was during That's Just The Way It Is that he went off into a very, very long piano solo that just departed from that song in ways you wouldn't believe. And at one point, I thought to myself, boy, this this could almost be right out of Bach, this, this, what he's playing right now. It had, that, it had a very Bach feel to it, very classical. And uh, in reading up on him afterwards, because I was so intrigued by this, I wanted to learn more about him and you know his, his influence and stuff, it turns out he's been playing with 
Bach and the Goldberg Variations, and he's been inserting pieces of the Goldberg Variations into various songs. So I actually was hearing Bach. It wasn't just something out of it. Uh, but man, it was it was good. It was really enjoyable. And I think that if you were a hardcore 80s Bruce Hornsby fan that wanted to go and just hear him play what came off of his albums, you would have been disappointed. But if you were in for a night of good music and entertainment and you know, he, he interacted with the audience, he took requests, he, 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 he never forgot there was an audience there. But my wife described it as it was like you were sitting in his living room. Uh, with, with some friends, and, and that's really, really was what it felt like. What impressed me most is to see somebody that is known for a piece, you know, that's their signature piece, willing to, to blow that up, and, and being confident enough in his skill, and the skill of his band members, which he just handed off to them. He, they could have, they could have screwed things up terribly, but he trusted them with this thing that is, you know, his claim to fame. To be that confident and, and that willing and that creative, I, I thought that was really something. So if you ever get a chance to see Bruce Hornsby live, I, I highly recommend it. Uh, it was it was a great time, and I would definitely, if the opportunity arises again, I would definitely, uh, definitely see him again. And if you're ever in the Pittsburgh area and you get a chance to check out the Carnegie Library and Homestead, I, I strongly advise you, you make a trip there. It's, uh, it's really cool. Really cool little piece of American history. So, we're leaving on Monday morning to drive down to Virginia Beach, the six plus hour drive. Uh, we will be staying there, I believe we're leaving on Thursday, but possibly Friday. And my wife still hasn't confirmed it. So, because of that, there's a 50-50 chance that we will not have a live stream on Friday. And I'll try to put a post up uh, sometime during the week to let you know what's going on there. Uh, but if you don't see it scheduled uh, on Friday night, there's not going to be one. I'm sorry, I can't give you more notice than that. But we'll be back the following Friday, of course. While we're there, uh, most of the trip is going to be eating and drinking and lounging. Um, unfortunately, it's not going to be terribly hot, which is, you know, that's, I'm okay with that. I'm not a big sunbather or beach goer, but uh, my wife's disappointed in it, and I'm sure her... Oh, by the way, I'm not just going with my wife. I'm going with my two sister-in-laws and my mother and father-in-law. So I've, I've got a running bet with myself right now whether or not the sisters will stop talking to one another before we get to the beach or while we're at the beach. It's unquestionable that it'll happen. It's just when it will happen. I thought I was going to lose the bet because I picked before, but today they got into a big argument, so there's still hope. <laughs> I might win the bet. Uh, but no, it'll, it'll be fine. I, I, I really do enjoy them all, and uh, they're, they're good people. The other big adventure is that I'm going to take my father-in-law fishing. Uh, he he's 92 and uh, he's 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 okay, but he's doing you know he's moving towards the poorly condition. He's got difficulties getting around. He he can't stand for very long. Um, and he he said, and it's kind of sad, but he's you know he's being realistic, I guess. He said this is probably the last time he's going to see the ocean, and he wants to fish. And this is the guy who. Got me into fly fishing and fly tying. Um, I never would have picked up a fly rod if it wasn't for him. And that's my fishing life now. I, I haven't saltwatered fished in 30 some years. So this will be a big uh, learning, relearning experience for me. But, you know, I, I want to do this, but I owe it to him as well. So we're gonna go fishing one of these, one of the days that we're at the beach. There's a pier off Virginia Beach, which is pretty well known um, as a fishing pier. Uh, very long pier, so you, you can you can catch some fish off this. It goes out pretty far, and it's handicap accessible and everything that we need. So we're gonna we're gonna head there one of the one of the mornings and uh, see how it goes. And I will certainly get some pictures and maybe even get some video of that uh, to share with you when I get back. 
So, yeah, that's what the, uh, the next week has in store for me. I hope you all have some, some fun this week and uh, enjoy the rest of your Sunday because you're not going to see this till Sunday morning, even though I'm preparing it on uh, Saturday night. And, uh, yeah, just have a great week ahead. And think kindly of me as I'm spending the week with my in-laws. Ah, uh, well, I'm going to finish my pipe, and I'm going to go watch Sven Gulli. So, you'll have a great Sunday. Enjoy the rest of your week. And until we speak again, I'll look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.